today I'm going to go over how to use uh, dump valves in Holly EFI and how to use them to help you kind of get right down the racetrack uh, when you're fighting traction or wheelie problems. So uh, I did a video on dump valves a little while ago and um, I, I didn't show really any tuning side of it, but this video I'm going to kind of show tuning side of it. So I've got two global files open right now. This uh, global file right now, this is from um, a couple days ago when we were at Orangeburg, uh, and I'm using an external dump valve to help the car get down the racetrack. And then this global file here is um, from a month ago. So this is actually from like exactly a month ago, 922. And um, this was, uh, I, had th I have three dump valves on the car. I've got two externals and one internal. I was using two of them strictly as spool assist valves to try to help it get up on the converter and whatnot, um, you know, on the trans brake. And then I was using this one as well strictly to just get uh, to the trans brake. So you can see this old, this is the old setup, right? This is uh, activate when on trans brake. And if you don't have this uh, ICF, let's just go over that real quick. If you go into to toolbox and then add individual config, uh, and if you come down here and go transmission and then select racing, I'm not going to do that because it's going to wipe out all my stuff in here. But, um, but yeah, so that's how you add it. Anyway, so the difference between the two is a spool assist valve is very basic. It just turns on uh, when you have your minimum TPS activation, and then it turns off based off of boost, right? So it's very basic. So this will turn on. You know, if you grab the trans brake button, you go over 25% throttle. The moment it hits five pounds of boost, it's going to deactivate. Same thing with this one, five and a half pounds, it's going to deactivate. Um, so these are really basic. Uh, the dump valve uh, part of this ICF is a little bit different. So the way this works is you can select if you want it active when on the trans brake, um, and then you can select an output duration. So the way this works is it's open or active, I'm, should, I'm sorry, not open, but active, right? So if you have a normally closed valve, it would be open uh, when it's activated. But when it's active, you can select this output duration for however long you want it to be open after you release the trans brake. Um, you've got a minimum TPS, you've got a pedaling strategy, um, you can uh, do an activation delay, you can do a manual disable, and then you also have like sensor activations. So um, this will stay on no matter what you set this up to uh, while it's on the trans brake. So when it's on the trans brake, it will always stay on. So you can use an advanced table to, to offset it if you wanted to while it's on the trans brake. But while it's on the trans brake, it is going to stay on until you let go of the button unless you have output duration selected and then you select the time. Okay? And then... Um, so I didn't, I, you know, during this run, I didn't have a time-based output, right? So that's, that's the purpose of this video is to kind of show you guys the difference here. And if we look at this one here, um, I re renamed some stuff and moved some stuff around in the software, but um, basically what I did was I took them off of the spool assist valves and I put them all onto dump valves, right? Didn't require any rewiring, just some moving around in the pin map. Um, so I've got an internal dump. Uh, and two externals. One's got a 60 jet in it, the other one's got a 100 jet in it. So, if you notice, the difference here, right, is that um, this one here, which is the old setup, was active when on the trans brake, and then it would it would shut, right, there was no output duration. It would shut and close and turn off uh, when you let go of the trans brake button, right? This one here was not active on the trans brake, but it had an output duration of one second. Okay, so that means that for one second after you let go of the trans brake, it would stay on, right? And then, um, you know, it was time-based right here. It would start to close, right? So, makes sense. Hopefully everybody understands it. Um, and then obviously you can uh, modify these as you see fit here. So, let's look at the data logs, right? So the first log we're going to look at is going to be the old one, right? So let's go, so let's go, uh, whoop. Let's go data logs, um, 922. So this is the old way of doing it, right? So let's just look at test three, open. So this was uh, while it was on, let's go to this one here. While this was, this was only open while it was on the trans brake, right? So 
Let's make this a little easier to view. Let's get rid of some stuff here. Turn off wheelie control, yada yada. So, as you can tell, um, we've got converter PSI right now. We're on the trans brake. Converter PSI is 11 PSI, right? So that's because I got all three of them dump valves open. When we hit uh, right here, we're at 5 PSI, right? So we scroll over. 5 PSI, it's turning off the first dump valve or spool assist valve at 5, right? We hit 5.5 PSI. It's turning off the second one, spool assist valve. And now we're up here into the 60 pounds of converter charge pressure. We built a little bit of RPM. We're up to 82 pounds. The third dump valve, or the, the actual dump valve is still open. But then when we scroll over, we, we're on the trans brake still here. We let go of the button. Now, if we watch converter charge pressure, uh, let's make this a little easier here. There we go. So then we watch converter charge pressure. Uh, you can see it spikes up to this 150-ish PSI, 160 PSI, right? So the problem the car was having was that it would go out and um, it would either wheelie, well, it would definitely wheelie, uh, or it would spin once we got about 0 0.6, 0 0.8 into the run. This is a run where it actually kind of went down, um, but we were at Orangeburg and the track is amazing. So uh, the, the track was so good that it, it, it'll hold anything you throw at it. And in fact, oh, this one didn't wheel either. So this was a pretty soft tune-up. This is a very soft tune-up. Um, you know, it, like, I mean, we were targeting a max of, you know, 22-ish PSI, and then it would make up to 25. Oh, I'm sorry, tar target a 25 PSI boost all the way out here at three seconds of, uh, into the run. But the purpose of this video is to show you the um, converter charge pressure, right? So if you don't know what converter charge pressure is, the converter charge pressure is how much pressure is being exhausted uh, from the torque converter through the cooler circuit, right? And I'm sure there's some converter guy that's watching this video and be like, no, it's not that. Whatever, chime in, tell me all about it. Um, but that's the layman's terms of, of how this works. The higher the pressure, the tighter the converter. Um, so, and the faster it couples. If you look at this RPM trace, right? So we're clicked up here, uh, we're 7,000 RPM. It, it rolls the engine over and the converter's tight it's pulling the motor down right so it's pulling the motor down to 6700 ish and it really just wants more power here right so once it gets a little bit more power in it and uh it gets a little bit more time um it starts to accelerate the engine and climbs up to the shift point right so the deal with this run here was uh i don't really even know but uh but yeah there we go there is a very basic soft tune-up with the dump valves off um, when you let go of the button. Or when, yeah, all the dump valves are off the moment you let go of the button, right? So you can see that sharp jump in converter charge pressure. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a comparison file. So a comparison data log is going to be able to let us overlay two data logs on top of each other. So I'm going to go, if you notice, it was named 922. We're going to go to 1020. 1020. Uh, let's look at... Um, Test three. I don't even. I don't even know which one's which. There we go. So now nah, test three is no good because I think that was a uh, drove left deal. I know which one. Test one. There we go. So here we go. This is the um, the new way I'm dealing with uh, you know converter charge uh, with the dump valves, right? So the dotted line is. The dotted line is the uh, comparison. The solid line is the original. So the solid line is the one where we had the dump valves um, closing when you let go of the trans brake button. And they were open the whole time you were on the trans brake. So if you notice right here, right, um, we have 11 pounds of converter charge pressure when we have all three of them valves open. Uh, and then we do the comparison, which has got no valves open. We got 106 PSI. So... It's, just, it, it's, it's actually interesting if you look at how the car spools, it actually gets up on target pretty dang fast too. So from now on, I probably won't be leaving any dump valves open when it's on the trans brake, and I'm going to use them strictly for getting down the racetrack. So, um, so the converter charge pressure is higher, but notice once all these dump valves are shut, right? So this is all these dump valves. The one is still on. Or the one that's still open, but the one that was still open is like a very small one, right? Um, and uh, and it's still open, 
and we still have a uh, we still have about the same converter charge pressure, right? Now the interesting part is when we let go of the trans brake button, right? So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm just going to look at the first two and a half seconds of the run, okay? So when we're on the trans brake button, we're very close to the same pressure, right? But in the dotted line, you'll see that the uh, the chart that the we have a timer enabled, right? Like what we talked about right here, right? So it's on for one second, where in the solid line, we don't, okay? So the, the timer is enabled on the dotted line, and then the uh, the solid line, there is no timer. So so the moment you let go of the trans brake button uh, with the solid line over here, is it, it just snatches all the dump valves shut, and then we've got full pressure, right? So down here in the bottom second panel, we've got converter charge pressure. So again, straight line, or non-dotted line, solid line, 152 pounds, right? And then um, this one here is 113. So I've got a dump valve open for one second, and then it shuts. So that doesn't look like that big of a deal, right? But going from 111 to 156, it's actually able to apply a heck of a lot more power. Look. So look at how far ahead we are in RPM. 6,900 to 7,600, right? Or 7,000, whatever, to 7,600. So we're 600 RPM ahead. We are 6.5 pounds of boost ahead, right? So 6.4 pounds of boost ahead. Um, and if we want to, we can look at the G-meter. Our G-meter is up by 0.35, which is huge. So if you tune a G-meter, you know that that's a big deal. Um, even where the G-meter peaks is earlier. And the reason is, is because we now have a little bit looser of a converter, and I can apply more power right? So um, notice that the whole G-meter run is, is up, right? So the dotted line is with the dump valve open, um, and the solid line is with the dump valve shut. So you can see the G-meter is like way ahead. And granted, we left on more power. Uh, but if you look, we're right at the same boost um, and RPM on the trans brake, right? So um, needless to say, we've got a, uh, we've got a lot more manageable race car now that um, that actually is faster by using the dump valve. So being open for a second uh, made made a good bit of difference here. And then as you can see, I was pulsing it shut across 1.5, and um, and we were we you know and we were easing it back in right. So could this use some tweaking for sure? Uh, could it be faster? Absolutely. I believe that the pass that we're looking at here in the dotted line went 110 60 foot, and the pass that we're looking at here in the solid line, I believe, went 117 60 foot, right, or 118. Uh, either way, a substantial improvement, right? So the uh, and the tunability of it, the usability of the car was substantially improved because we can actually kind of control how the car reacts with the dump valve. So. In closing, if we look at how this is set up, um, I did not have it on while on the trans brake. And some combos are better to have it on when, on, when it's on the trans brake. And I'll say that we'd probably get a little bit of this, a uh, little bit of this, this jump, right? This, you see this little spike right here? That little spike right there is absolutely that, that, that uh, dump valve finally opening it, but it's just got a little bit of a delay, right? Because mechanically, the valve just doesn't want to open that fast. So the pressure's starting to climb, and then the valve opens. It says, oh, okay, okay, we'll come down here, right? So um, with that, that much more power in the engine that much sooner, this thing was going to spike and roll just like this one, right? So um, this, using dump valves for, this is, I consider this using a dump valve for traction purposes, right? Um, or getting down a racetrack has uh, proven to be rather useful, especially with the new combination that's in the car. It makes it a lot more manageable, and with Holly software, it is a heck of a lot easier to do. Uh, Holly's new V6 software uh, with the Racing Trans ICF makes it a heck of a lot easier to actually use and manipulate um, to your benefit. So uh, I, I'm not going to... I don't want to give anybody like some you know advice on like how long you should leave it open or how long you should leave it shut, whatever. That's kind of you know tinker with it, play with it from here to there. But uh, but needless to say, that um, that tune up right there is is literally that was the first attempt with this dump valve being open. So um, at a good racetrack, well, I left the dump valves wide open when we were at streetcar takeover because I was afraid of the racetrack not being that great. So okay. 
hopefully this helps everybody out and uh, makes a decision, helps you make a decision about how you want to tune your dump valves. See ya.